Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I am Daniel. I am Rex, and this is a bottle of whiskey, nine banded. Ah, uh, it's a Texas, guys. Mm -hmm. Austin, Texas. Sort of. They're in Austin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sort of. Where in Austin? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I've not been to their location. Okay. But uh, so this was a gift from Shelly Buck, magnificent. Ba oh, we didn't. Wait a minute. Got to do <gasps> Yesterday's mother. Here, hold put on. that aside. We'll do this one first. Hold on, hold on. Shelly Buck, you're magnificent. Bastard. <laughs> okay, so Shelly Buck, that yep. is one of our whiskey sommeliers, right on. used to be a badass rep for Whistle Pig, okay. is now. Uh, working with Nine Banded here in Austin, Texas. Okay. Shelly is awesome. Shelly does great work. Anybody who had Shelly should be glad so to work with should her. Should we have ripped? The um, crickets? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm about to just throw Shelly under the bus. So wait, so do we give her, throw her a bone? <laughs> It's like, are you saying you do the Magnificent Bastard eating as a consolation? <laughs> no. They're, they're throwing I'm just saying, I actually forgot no. she was a rep and we forgot the crickets. This is a rep. This is okay. a rep. There's it's no bastard. Okay. Retract the bastard. Retract Re the bastard. Rewind the bastard. Dan lost Re the on this one. Rewind the bastard. So okay. this is, so do that whole speech. So, I kept the, keep that whole speech, Dan, because it leads into Shelly Buck. Is a rep, and she brought us nine banded whiskey. So she's a rep. She has a vested interest in the success of this. Yes. So she gets a crickets first. Awkward moment of silence. You know what would make it more awkward? Yes. If I read the description of who they are as a distillery and I finish it with something I'm going to finish it with. Are you ready? And you know what would make it even more awkward after that? Hmm. Go ahead and do the thing. Okay. Go ahead and do the thing and then I'll make it more awkward. And you guess. You guess. All right, just do it. Okay. Just do it. And then. We're made in Austin, Texas. Yes. We're made from Austin, Texas. Right. Hang on. Don't make it awkward for me. Oh, cut it out. <laughs> we distill the heart that flows freely in this town right into our, ah, oh, son of a bitch. It's all arm hair rub. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. I the can't do it. Arm hair caress? Yeah. It doesn't work for you. No, it's freaking me out. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay. They distill the heart of that flows freely in town into the whiskey. They add limestone filtered water from an ancient spring in Texas whole country. It's smooth, it's real. It doesn't taste like anything else because it cannot be made anywhere else. We don't care how you drink it, just enjoy it. Yeah. Distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, right. sourced from MGP. <laughs> what the actual f Right? Right. I mean, this line is when I, look, I wasn't going to rant Hold until on. this line. No, we need it. We it need doesn't it. taste like anything else because it can't be made anywhere else. Oh, fine. Come on, Here's guys. The thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Ah, Jesus. Are, do we have com confirmation that this write-up was for this specific bottling and not something else? Maybe they're they are. Else. They are making whiskey. Yeah. Right. But that write-up was for this whiskey. That was this write-up is their website. Okay. But every bottle I currently have of Nine Bandit is sourced whiskey. Well, but their website was this specifically talking about the things that they're making. I, I, it's not very specific. Okay. This, this is my problem with Nine Bandit. It always has been that I've always liked the stuff that I get because oh. MGP makes really good whiskey. Yeah, this, and Aaron Beaver's very used familiar. to work for them. Right. I, they seem like amazing people. It's very familiar. I like Marketing this. people wrote their website right. and tried to explain to them that you need to be authentic and local and right. instead of transparent. Well, now, it's not. Hold that, that, on. You just, throw, you just throw out the word authentic. Mm -hmm. That's not what's happening. You need to basically, if there's marketing people involved, local. you need to appeal to appeal the, the local, local sensibilities, and yeah. But at least on the bottle, uh, there are other bottles in town that are sourcing and are not putting this on the label. Right. It does say distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, age, aged at least two years. Okay. And it's a straight bourbon whiskey. So I don't know. This is a little ranty, but you were you were basically pulling something from a website mm -hmm. and then umbrella applying it to. Everything, including the things that they're sourcing, which I, I understand is kind of not clear enough, but. Yeah, so this is the weeded bourbon mash bill that MGP does. Right. Which we have a couple of barrels of, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how long it stayed in Texas, but I love yeah, the way it no, smells. No, we're very familiar with this, this nose, this whiskey, even mm -hmm. going through some time in Texas. 
And you get that classic, man, that MGP, that sherry, that oak, a little bit of that herbal undertone there. And then it's, it's, it's aromatic, man. It's perfect. It is. It's sort of, even in a lower proof, 90 proof, yeah. it sort of just like it floats out of the glass. And it's like a, like a ripe, matured cherry. Mm. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's nice. It is. It's a sweet cherry. Yeah. With a little bit of a barrel tang at the end of it. And I get a little caramel in there. Mm -hmm. What was it? Was they proofed it down a bit? What is this? Forty-five percent? Yep. <laughs> I literally just said that. Oh, really? Like, like less than ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Quit rubbing the arm. You're killing me. He's gonna wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat with the memory. Yeah, it's already happening. The sensory memory. Of that. <sighs> David Hoffland, what are you getting? I'm looking for another bottle of Nine Banded. To Daniel and Rex, are weeded bourbons sweeter than normal bourbons? Have not had much bourbon, only Jim Beam and Maker's Mark. Did not like the Maker's because it's overly sweet cherry notes. But do all bourbons have that overly sweet cherry taste? Or is it only weeded bourbons? Want to try a bourbon that's somewhat budget, that's somewhat budget line that has more of the oaky taste rather than the sickly sweet cherry taste? So he's liking the oaky stuff more so than the cherry stuff. The cherry note is very, very common. Yeah, maybe go into more of like the wild turkeys or something. And I think that cherry note is more often going to be coming from how the corn element is interacting with the wood more so than the wheat element. I have found that when the wheat is light, it does sort of almost like smooth out the rough edges of the bourbon and make it a little more sweet and approachable. Mm -hmm. But when wheat is cranked up, it's not sweet. Like we've had wheat whiskeys that are just like really grain heavy and deep and rich right right yeah, yeah so i don't think wheat in itself is sweetening whiskey um the cool but i think some of the weeded whiskey if you don't like the cherry i think the culprit's probably going to be what corn is doing and there are plenty there i mean mm. don't get me wrong wheat can add a sweet layer to a whiskey for sure right. and there are plenty of whiskeys out there that are a bit drier that don't have that cherry note but i just, you know, off the top of my head, I think at least 50% or more are going to have some element of a cherry note in there. Um, the the whiskeys, I'm trying to think. Um, Buffalo Trace? I don't know if that was a cherry note in there. No, it was that vanilla cream. Yeah, but so Buffalo Trace. It still had a little bit of something. It's a slight cherry, um, not a huge cherry. And then I think Wild Turkey 101 had more of a cherry note. Old Forester. I don't think that had a big cherry. The Maker's Mark does have a big cherry. Mm. Does have a big cherry. But yeah, there's there's, there's options. Um, if you don't like cherry, though, you may want to explore categories outside of bourbon because that is a pretty common cornerstone flavor in the bourbon world. Filthy McNasty. Filthy. No, I haven't read the comment yet. If you're going to be rocking the name Filthy McNasty, <laughs> if it's not an amazing comment, then you should not be using this name. <laughs> because you set the bar really high with your just name. with the name. Filthy McNasty. So we'll see. We'll see if it lives up to Filthy McNasty. Recently bought a, uh, brought a Glenfiddich 12-year-old and enjoying it. Um, on the label, it has printed married in oak after being aged in sherry and bourbon casks. Is that the same as finishing? Now, Filthy, here's the thing. You come at me with all the McNasty, and then you don't... You don't deliver upon my expectations of nastiness. That's a good question. You ask a very practical, reasonable question. Reasonable question. Yeah. Good job. The no, answer no, 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 is not good job. Bad job. I want some filthy McNasty up in this. The answer is no. It's not finishing, even though it technically falls into the category of something that might be a finishing. Marrying uh, of whiskeys is something that was traditionally done when you wanted various barrels of things to blend together and become one cohesive unit. Yep. And you decided to do that in barrels instead of in stainless steel tanks or totes. Yep. Speaking of cherry, that has a big old cherry in yeah, there. Yeah, it does. Big old cherry note. You got a little bit of that uh, like a sweet and tea quality, some milkiness. And, yeah. I think it's a really good sourced whiskey. Yeah. And uh, especially at the price point, it feels weird reviewing this, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel like... It's, it's what came out of our barrel house the other day. <laughs> well, but proof down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, no, no. Beyond that, because there's so many places that are doing uh, bourbons mm -hmm. uh, from MGP. Right. 
It's that, like we're basically just reviewing the same distillery right. over like and over and over again. Have, have we reviewed this? How many this? times have we reviewed this, with very, <laughs> this specific mash bill from MGP probably yeah. several times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we still like it, it turns out. <laughs> it's still good. Oh, they make good stuff. Everybody knows they make yeah. good stuff. Here's defining stealing and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver's heart. And is that a question? Well, I was trying, trying, to, to, I was trying to think of something filthy and or McNasty. Mm, and if you drink, May you drink, drink with us. us. You let me down, Phil. <laughs>